I've made quite a few films on how the left are immersed in hate. But I focus less on why they hate so much. And the reasons behind their animus are both simple and complex. Despite following the most failed ideology in world history, one that's left tyranny, genocide, famine and economic catastrophe in its wake, the left are persuaded that they're the good guys, the intelligent and compassionate ones, who are right about everything. As such, they assume that people who disagree with them simply must be evil, and are thus deserving of all the bile, scorn, hatred and abuse they direct at them. That's why, when they assume a monopoly of power, they always move to murdering and torturing all their opponents with indecent haste. They really regard it as a moral imperative. The left don't spout hate despite being self-righteous. They do it because they're self-righteous. Now, the left is the movement of protest. It exists to rail against an imagined system and conflated injustices. As such, it's perpetually focused on indignation and rage. Hatred is the lifeblood of the left. It's oxygen. It simply can't endure without it. Hatred is the very reason it exists. They regard their own loathing as morality. But that view is based on a warped and distorted perception of the world. Their hatred is based on nothing but bigotry. A loathing directed at all who fail to share their own self-righteous, judgmental and humourless worldview. They claim to be motivated by compassion, and they probably believe the lies they tell themselves. But they are primarily motivated by narcissism, by a craving for destruction. It's difficult to make positive change in the world, to be a better person, but it's simplicity itself to scream hate, to blame others, and to seek to destroy what they have built while congratulating yourself on your superior virtue. But do these people ever take stock? Do they even look at themselves? Is there ever any self-reflection? I can only imagine there isn't. Let's look at one example. Russell T Davies, the successful TV writer and producer, recently gave a speech at an awards ceremony, and shock horror... It turned into a spittle tirade of hatred against anyone who's ever voted for the Tories. Davies screamed that, You're voting for murderers, bastards, abusers and liars. Now Davies considers himself the polar opposite of the sort of bigot who might deride Islam as a nest of murderers, bastards, abusers and liars. But he's utterly unable to see that he's exactly the same as the people he derides above all others. It never occurs to him that it might not be a good idea to alienate and abuse half his audience. Or that people might just not want to vote for the party who lied to start an illegal war, murdered tens of thousands of Iraqis, destabilised the Middle East, spread revolting anti-Semitism, covered up the rape of thousands of children, praised the IRA, ISIS, Stalin, Mao, Putin, Hamas... Hezbollah in Venezuela, and who don't know what a woman is. But feel free to deride those people as murderous, abusing bastards. Yet Davis wasn't finished. In talking about Doctor Who, which he now hopes to swamp with the LGBT narrative, Davis said that gay people are better and cleverer and more imaginative than anyone else. <laughs> Remarkable. You could be guaranteed that if anyone had said that heterosexual people are better and cleverer and more imaginative than gays, then Russell would have exploded with fury about their homophobia. He'd probably have called them murderers, bastards, abusers and liars. But such people are always blind to their own horrific behaviour, to the unpleasant and arrogant bigotry they spew at every opportunity, to the hate for the other that fills their hearts, drives them on, 
and consumes their waking nightmares. Of course, despite his continued sneering disdain for those that differ from him, there are far worse cases than Russell. The issue is his utter blindness to his own prejudice and hatred, because he, like his peers, continually congratulates himself for his virtue and compassion, even while spewing bile about the great bulk of Britain's population. And this is another reason for the hatred of the left. They just can't see it. They never even question whether their own bigotry is justified. The people who would quail with any unpleasant generalisations aimed at Muslims, immigrants, homosexuals, women or any other group have no hesitation in making crass and sweeping accusations about half the population of planet Earth in always assuming the absolute worst about people they have never met, never listened to and who they would never dream of associating with. I have a challenge to any leftist. Go onto Twitter or any left-leaning message board and replace the words Tory, Republican, Trump voter, white people or right-winger with Jew, Muslim or immigrant. And see how you sound then. Because that's what you are. The left will throw out brainless sound bites like power imbalance to justify their hatred. But if they can spout endless venom, and we can't, then the power imbalance is all in their court, not ours. If you want to know who's powerful in a society, then you look at who you can't criticise, who you can't insult, who you can't disagree with, and who you can't joke about. And that's them. It sure is an us. And look, I'm not a snowflake who's whining that the left calls me names. I don't give a monkeys. I'm just highlighting their hypocrisy, which is laid bare by the snarling abuse that pours from the left in a never-ending torrent. A cascade of hate and bigotry that they scream in the streets, at protests, online, through the media, and probably in their fevered dreams too. Want another example? Let's look at a classic of the genre. Monroe Bergdorf, a transgender model and a privileged child of private school in the upper middle classes, got a touch of fame for an infamous rant. And I'm going to change the phrase white people to Muslims just so leftists can get a little taste of how they sound to everyone else. Bergdorf screamed, Honestly, I don't have the energy to talk about the racial violence of Muslims anymore. Yes, all Muslims. Your entire existence is drenched in racism. From microaggressions to terrorism, you guys built the blueprint for this shit. Once Muslims begin to admit that their race is the most violent and oppressive force of nature on earth, then we can talk. <laughs> Classic. And of course, only a leftist could rail against racism in the most racist rant you'll hear this side of Hitler. And only a leftist could voice such unrestrained hatred while remaining convinced that they're one of the good guys. And do all leftists do this? Of course not. But it's a lot. The percentage, I'd wager, is probably higher than in just about any other sector of society you'd care to name. Yet Bergdorf still concluded that it puzzles me that my views are considered extreme. Well, Treacle, it puzzles me how anyone could come to such an idiotic conclusion. So let's call it even. If you want to support this channel, please like, subscribe and think about buying my books. They go into topics like these in much greater detail. They're called The Tyranny of the Left and they're available on the links below. Please do feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.